Good morning, Year Fives, and welcome to your reading lesson. I hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I know the weather wasn't great, and yesterday was freezing cold. I took my dog for a walk, and it was icy, icy, icy. So I hope you kept nice and warm inside, and you managed to have a nice restful weekend. Today, we're going to be looking at our learning objective, which is to look at new vocabulary, new words. And this is what we do every Monday, where we explore the text, and we look for words that we are not too certain about, um, and we look up their meanings. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, when you notice the reading today, you will see that I've highlighted some words. Those are the words that you need to pay careful attention to, and especially reading around the context of the word, so that those are the words I have selected for your vocabulary list today. Just a reminder that those of who have reading eggs, you are going to log on to reading eggs now and complete the next couple of lessons. Um, you do not need to do these lessons. And those children, who have not been able to get onto Teams yet, it is very important that you email us today at year5 at the primaryacademy.com email address because no work is going to be put on the slides this week for um, reading. So all the work is now going to be on Teams. Okay, so if you can't access Teams, please make sure that you send us an email so that we can sort you out um, as soon as possible so that you can log on to complete the work. Right, so we're going to continue now and our skill today is obviously looking at vocabulary and to understand the meaning of the new words that we're going to look at. So here's our text which we're going to read together and there you can see I've highlighted some words and those are the words that you need to pay careful attention to because those are the words that I'm going to be asking the meaning of. Right so let's carry on reading the next four pages. Barney sat in, in the front seat and held the steering wheel. If only he could drive he could take the car to the police. He took off the handbrake, at least he knew how to do that. The car began to roll backwards towards the edge of the pit. In a panic, Barney opened the door and scrambled out. With the car still moving, Barney's mouth was open and he held his middle as he watched the big black car move slowly towards the pit. There was a lurch as first one back wheel, then another went over the edge. The car bumped down on its underneath. Perhaps it would have stopped now, but no, the edge of the top crumbled and the rear of the car settled lower. The front wheels rose slowly in the air and with a horrible scraping grinding, the whole car slid over the edge. There seemed to be quite a long time before Barney heard the crash as the car hit the bottom of the dump, but he felt too sick to look. When he opened his eyes, he saw Stig looking over the edge of the cliff waving and pointing and grinning all over his face as if it were some great animal they had just hunted over the cliff and he was looking forward to cutting up the meat. Then he was running off round the pit to get to the bottom. Barney remembered the suitcases and hurriedly hid them deep in a bramble patch before running off after Stig again. By the time he got to the car, which was lying on its back with its wheels in the air, Stig was already hard at work skinning the leather off the seats and the carpets off the floors. Barney stood helplessly watching. Stig obviously thought that anything thrown into his dump was for him to do what he liked with. But if the men came back and found them at it, they would be very angry. Then he saw what they would have to do. He got up on the pile of rubbish at the foot of the cliff and started throwing things on top of the dead motor car. Old wash tubs, bedsteads, bicycle frames. Stig soon got the idea. They were burying the animal to hide it from the enemy. Before long, the car was covered with bits and pieces, branches and moss. Then, as they worked, Stig suddenly froze into stillness and listened. Barney listened too. There were voices coming from the top of the cliff. Barney crept into the inside of the upturned car and beckoned Stig in too. They crouched on the ceiling, looking up at the seats and pedals and listened. The voices of the two men came down from the top of the cliff. Well, ain't there, isn't it? Go on, have a look. Have a good look. All right, then it's gone. What do we do now? We've got a nice long walk. That's what we've got, mate. Or if you don't like walking, you can run. You seem to like running, all right. Who likes running? You'd run too, didn't you? You started running fast. Got windy because a couple of kids was playing Red Indians. So we've lost a lot all through you. I tell you, there wasn't kids or wasn't anyways. What was it then? It was a thing, I tell you. A horrible thing. First, out of, uh, out of that, their pit eye shouldn't wonder. Come on, let's get out of here. I tell you, I don't like this place. I'm getting back to town. If I have to walk all the way. 
Bonnie smiled at Stig as the voices faded away. Stig grinned and shook his horrible club. Granny and Lou were back from shopping when Bonnie struggled in through the front gate, carrying the two heavy suitcases full of silver. Bonnie, what on earth have you been up to? Granny exclaimed. I brought your spoons and forks back, Granny. You see, two men came to do the television. I mean, that's what they said, but they were thieves, really. And I was up in the tree, but me and Stig chased them away and I let their car go over into the chalk pit. And it's there now with all the treasure in it. Well, you have been having fun, said Granny. Now let's have tea, shall we? Lay the table, Lou, and Bonnie, go and wash your hands. Look at them. Lou started laying the table. Where are the teaspoons, Granny? She asked. In the usual place, I suppose, dear, said Granny from the kitchen. Barney put his hand to his mouth. No, they're not, Granny, he said. They're hanging on the fence in Mr. Tickle's field. What? Granny exclaimed. Really, Barney, that's naughty. You know you mustn't have take the silver for games. I didn't take them, Granny, Barney protested. It was the television man, 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 and Stig was running after him with a club, and I tried to stop him because I thought he wasn't a thief. But he took his coat off and his left hanging on the fence, and the spoons fell out. I thought he was going to have a picnic at first, but then I knew they were yours. I'll go and fetch them, and he ran out. When Barney got back, there was a policeman at the door talking to Granny. She looked worried. What's this about thieves, Sonny? asked the policeman. Yes, I saw them up the tree. I mean, I was, and one of them went into the house, and I went to fetch my friend Stig and me, and Stig had a fight with them, and they ran away, and the teaspoons fell out, and the car was full of treasure. The policeman scratched his head. Ah, now, a car, you say? Just where might this car be? Barney stood on one leg. Well, I thought perhaps I could drive it to the police station, but it went backwards over the cliff, and Stig thought it was dead and started skinning it, and then we buried it. But I couldn't help it, I promise. The policeman was trying to write all this down in a notebook, but when he got to the part about skinning and burying the car, he stopped writing and looked hard at Barney. You wouldn't be making this up, would you, son? He asked sternly. I'm afraid my grandson has a very strong imagination, said Granny. But I'm telling the truth, Granny, I promise, said Barney. Perhaps the little boy would like to show me where this uh, alleged treasure is, madame suggested the policeman. Right, what I suggest you do now is you can go back and reread this. So rewind the video and go and reread this on your own now. You can either do it out aloud or you can just do it silently in your head so you can make sure that you've understood the text. Right, we're gonna move on to our access now to go onto Teams to do your vocab lesson. So you can log onto Teams now. And as I said, all your work is on your quiz and you're gonna answer that. And there's some challenges at the end for children who feel that they really wanna push their vocabulary today. And some words that we haven't looked at are gonna be in the quiz um, today. So that's just a little bit of an extra challenge that I would like you all to try and do. So you will notice that there were some words that I haven't highlighted that are in your quiz today. And I would like you to see if you can find it in the text, read around it and see if you can give me your understanding of that word. So good luck. I hope you have a wonderful day of learning. And don't forget, if you do finish your work early, you are welcome to go on to um, do your reading and you can do your AR quizzes still, right? And make sure that you're trying to up those word counts. Um, some other suggestions is to be writing a diary. So if you've got um, some time, go and think about what you're going to be doing today or perhaps write about your weekend um, just to keep you going. So hope you have your wonderful week um, of learning and enjoy the rest of the day. Take care.